also be upstanding for the national anthem. Most Reverend Professor Daniel Yinka Safo to give us the opening prayer. Please let us stand for prayer. Great things he has done, greater things he will do unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done, great things he has done, great things he will do unto the Lord. Be the glory, great Almighty and everlasting God, we praise you for all that you have done for us as a nation, Ghana. Almighty God, send down upon all those who hold office, office in this noble country, especially the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, his vice, and Ananom the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose, they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. Lord, we bring before you your humble servant, Honorable Dr. Kwame Adokofo, our chancellor, who is about to be installed to office. Give him wisdom, courage, strength, sense of direction, and the grace needed to fully accomplish his task. O oh, eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, especially Kumasi Technical University, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discoveries, and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant that all those who teach and all those who learn may know you to be the source of all truth. Lord, come among us and preside at the proceedings of this investiture so that and in the end the glory will be yours and the blessings will be ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Your Excellency the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana Dr. Mohamed Baumia Your Excellency the former President of the Republic of Ghana John Ajikum Kufo your Excellencies, High Commissioners and Ambassadors here present, the representative of His Royal Majesty Utum IV Osetu II, Asante Hene, Ministers of State and Honorable Members of Parliament here present, the Chairman and Members of the Governing Council, the Vice Chancellor, Members of Convocation, our respected clergymen, Friends from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The conversion of the Polytechnics in Ghana to technical universities necessitated the appointment of a chancellor for Kumasi Technical University. Pursuant to the statutory obligations of the university, the Governing Council has appointed a highly qualified statesman for the position. Today is historic 
in the calendar of Kumasi Technica University as we perform and witness the swearing in of the Chancellor for the first ranked technical university in Ghana. We are privileged to be the page setters in many activities pertaining to technical universities. And today's activities here substantiate that. This serves as a major milestone in our vision of becoming a world-class technical university. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, we have all gathered here to officially contribute to the investiture of the Chancellor of the University, an honorable citizen of Mother Ghana, who has been a trailblazer in several fields, from whom we have no doubt that this university would benefit immensely. With your permission, Your Excellency, I call on the Chairman of the Governing Council of our great university, Professor Dr. Met Ben Bafuboni, to formally welcome this gathering to this historic occasion. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, Your Excellency, former President of the Republic of Ghana, John Ajakum Kufo, your Royal Majesty Utunfo Seetutu, Asantehene, represented by Asafuhene, Achenfuo, Asafuwache, Ajimambadu, Bunsu. Again, we have in our presence former council member Nana Apajahene, Minister of Education, Dr. Osadi Chum, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, Minister of State, Members of Parliament, Heads of Ghana Educational Regulatory Agencies, Members of the Governing Council of Kumasi Technical University, Vice Chancellor, Kumasi Technical University, you have Vice Chancellors of Sister Universities present, Members of Conv 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 Convocation, Heads of Security Agencies, Leadership of political parties, our venerable traditional leaders, students, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It is an honor and a privilege to welcome you all to Kumasi Technical University, most especially your Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Mabudu Baumia. Your Excellency, Today marks a milestone in the history of Kumasi Technical University as we induct a great son of the land. This induction ceremony is the first of its kind in the history of technical universities in Ghana. In 2016, Kumasi Polytechnic was converted to a university. The conversion created the office of the chancellor and various regulatory frameworks. The Chancellor's position has remained vacant till date. A search committee was constituted in accordance with the statutes of the university to see to the appointment of a perfect candidate to serve as Chancellor of this great institution. Today, I tip my hat to the university community and all who played various roles in the selection process. The University Council, alumni, convocation, senior staff, junior staff, and the Students' Representative Council, SRC, were all represented on the search committee. Now, given the caliber of candidates who were equally qualified to be appointed to the search committee, tax was indeed a Herculean one. After several deliberations, I believe the team chose well. They recommended an illustrious son of the land. Consequently, on 21st of June 2022, the Governing Council approved the search committee's recommendation. 
Your Excellency, it gives me a great pleasure to proudly welcome a man I have known for many years as Kumasi Terika University's first chairman. He is in the person of Honorable Dr. Adekufuo. <laughs> Incoming Chancellor, we have and must continue to break more glass ceilings and to make what seems impossible achievable. Your Excellency, I will take a great, a man of great integrity, disciplined, vision oriented to lead Kumasi Technical University into the purpose of powering Ghana's economy and reducing unemployment among our university graduates. It is my, my prayer that our university, under your leadership, will seek to continue to produce graduates who are critical thinkers empowered with 21st century entrepreneurial skills and are ready to meet the demands of 21st century. Honorable Dr. Kwame Adekofo, I believe you are such a man, the right man for the job. <laughs> Mr. President, no, Mr. Vice President, excuse me, Your Royal Majesty's Representative, our Minister of Education, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, on behalf of the Governing Council, it is my great honor that I, Professor Ben Bafuboni, in my capacity as the Chairman of the Governing Council, officially welcome you, Honorable Dr. Kwame Adekofo, to Kumasi Technical University community. I wish you a faithful tenure of office I thank all gathered here for, for gracing this occasion. Memamo Akwawa. Thank you. May I hear the cultural troupe dance and present the gown for the Chancellor? the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, may I now invite Most Reverend Dr. Cyril Kobina Ben Smith, the Primate of Church of the Province of West Africa, Archbishop of Internal Province of Ghana, and Bishop of Mampong, to blaze the gown.
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Most Reverend. Your Excellency, may I now invite the Vice Chancellor to first read the profile of the Chancellor before the enrobing. His Excellency, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. His Excellency, John Ajokum Kufo, the former President of the Republic of Ghana. Nana Achemfo Asafu Boachi Ajima Bonsu Asafu Hene, representing Otunfo Asante Hene. Honorable Dr. Ose Yawaduchum, Honorable Minister of Education, Chairman and Members of the University Council, Pro Vice Chancellor and other officials of the University, Nananum Honorable Ministers and Members of Parliament, Former Ministers and Former Members of Parliament, Deans and Directors, members of the Diplomatic Corps, all government appointees, members of Convocation, members of the Alumni Association of KSTU, members of the PLES Corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Kwame Adukufo, who will soon be sworn in as the first Chancellor of Kumasi Technical University. Dr. Kwame Adokufo is an accomplished, distinguished, and respected statesman in Ghana. He is a former minister for defense and also for interior, a physician consultant, and was a lecturer at the Department of Medicine at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technologies School of Medicine. He founded and managed Kufo Clinic, Edum Kumasi. Dr. Adukufo was educated at Asim Boys School, Achimota School, Cambridge University, and University College Medical School, London. He was a postgraduate student and a member of staff at the Middlesex Hospital, London. After qualifying from Cambridge in 1970 with M.A. Cantor, Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery degrees, he worked in West Suffolk General and St. Charles Hospitals, London. He returned to Ghana in 1971 to work as a medical officer in Kolebu Teaching Hospital till 1973. Later in the same year, he returned to the Middlesex Medical School Hospital, London, as a postgraduate student in medicine and a member of staff. He passed the MRCP UK examination in 1975. In the same year, he was awarded Fellow of Royal Society of Tropical Medicine. He is a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians, London, and West African College of Physicians. Dr. Adukufo worked as a medical registrar at the Old Church and St. Helier's Hospital, both in Southeast England, before returning to Ghana to work as a physician at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Kumasi. Dr. Kwame Adukufo founded the Kufo Clinic located along the Prempe, the second street in Kumasi in 1978. The Kufo Clinic was outstandingly successful. Other achievements. Dr. Adukufo taught at the KNUST Medical School for years without taking stipend. He was an inspector of examinations at the University of Ghana Medical School 
Department of Medicine and member of the Court of Examiners responsible for assessing foreign trained doctors wishing to practice in Ghana by the Ghana Medical and Dental Council. He's among the few physicians in Ghana who are fellows of the Royal College of Physicians, London, UK. He instituted a prize for the overall best final year student in medicine at Cairn University. The Adokufo Prize is still very coveted by students. Dr. Adokufo was elected national president of the Ghana Medical Association from 1992 to 1995. In all the three occasions that he contested, he stood unopposed. It was during the leadership of Dr. Adokufo that the construction of the GMA headquarters at Kolebu was initiated, and he was honored by his colleague doctors with a plaque at the commissioning of the building in appreciation of his contribution. Dr. Adokufo, as president of GMA, represented doctors on the board of the University of Ghana Medical School and the Ghana Prisons Service Council. He also represented the association at meetings in South Africa, Nigeria, and the United Kingdom. In 1992, he was elected the representative for West Africa on the executive committee of the Confederation of African Medical Association and Societies in Blantyre, Malawi. He was awarded gold medal for distinguished medical practice by the Ghana Medical Association and Dental Council in 2006. As a politician and member of parliament for Mencia in the period 1997 to 2008. He is a founding member of the Popular Front Party, PFP, All People's Party, APP, the Dankwa Busia Memorial Club, and the New Patriotic Party, NPP. Dr. Adukufo was also a member of the National Policy and Advisory Committee of the NPP, chairperson of the Health Committee of the party, member of the National Executive Council and the National Council of the party. As chairperson of the NPP National Campaign on Health Policy for 2000 general elections, Dr. Adukufo wrote the party's health policy for the manifesto. Dr. Adukufo was elected unopposed as the NPP parliamentary candidate for Manchester constituency for four times and entered parliament in 1997. He won the 1996 parliamentary elections convincingly. As a member of parliament for Manchester, he got support from the Canadian International Development Agency, CEDA, the Swiss Embassy, the European Union, the British High Commission, Get Found, Japanese Embassy, and Latter-day Saints to complete numerous projects for the constituents. Through that, the support, he provided water closet toilet facilities, school blocks, computers and accessories for schools, road rehabilitation, books, uniforms, and microcredit for women traders. The Bokrum estate in Kumasi, for the first time, was provided with a huge overhead water reservoir that eased water shortage for the residents. The biggest project accomplished for the people of Manchia during the tenure of Dr. Adekufo was the Ashtown Community Center. The center has a library, computer laboratory, canteen, indoor games room, offices for the Manchia Sub Metro, a 300 seater capacity facility, and a football field. He was the ranking member for health, a member of the House Committee, Committee on Selection, and Committee on Environment, Science, and Technology in Parliament. As a cabinet minister, 
first as Minister of Defense and later on as Acting Minister of Interior. As Minister of Defense, Dr. Adokufo was the guest speaker at the UN Conference on Peacekeeping in Maputo, Mozambique, in 2002 on the team Security and the New Partnership for Africa's Development. It was during this conference that the late President Nelson Mandela invited him to his home at Santen Johannesburg in South Africa. In May 2003, Dr. Adokufo delivered the keynote address at the second Tualu Dialogue at Tualu, South Africa. This was a conference attended by heads of state, cabinet ministers, leading academics, and influential journalists. The topic for the occasion was meeting the challenges of democracy and economic development in Africa. In attendance at the conference were President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda, Mr. F. W. D. Clark, former president of South Africa, Baroness Linda Choka, British Minister of State for Overseas Development in Africa, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Africa, many ambassadors, academics, and others. He led the Ghanaian delegation to the 10th anniversary celebration of the Rwandan genocide in Kigali, Rwanda. It was during the tenure of Dr. Akufo as the Minister of Defense that the second phase of the 37 military hospital was constructed and the hospital was elevated to postgraduate teaching hospital. The project consists of polyclinic, IT center, physiotherapy department, a male surgical ward, public health division, outpatient clinic for surgical obstetrics and gynecology, ear, nose and throat, dermatology and medical departments. Other significant achievements of Dr. Dukufo as a Minister of Defense are the construction of the new Burma Hall and Library, the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, the, the Computer and Commercial Center at Burma Camp, the Beijing Barracks, and the rehabilitation of the Nicholson Stadium. It was during the tenure of Dr. Adukufo that the postgraduate degree program was introduced at the Armed Forces Staff and Command College. Dr. Adukufo introduced the Armed Forces Open Day. It was intended to tell the cold relations between the military and civilians. During the Armed Forces Open Day, civilians were encouraged to visit the barracks interact with the service personnel and have a good look at some of the military hardware. Another significant achievement of Dr. Adokufo is the construction of the new office building for the Ministry of Defense. Like other building projects completed, including the Kofi Annan Peacekeeping Training Center, Computer Center, Postgraduate Medical School, and to some extent, the imposing Burma Hall, the new ministry building was constructed with resources from outside the national budget. Dr. Adokofo was adjudged both as Man of the Year and Minister of the Year by the Independent and the Spectator newspapers respectively in 2002. He was awarded the Order of the Volta Companion by the government of Ghana in recognition of his sterling contribution to healthcare in the country. As Minister, sorry, as Acting Minister of Interior, on April 18, 2002, the President directed him to act as the Minister of Interior in addition to his substantive defense portfolio. Dr. Adokofo was influential in bringing peace to Dagon at the early stages of the conflict as the Minister of Interior. The establishment of the joint military 
police patrol in greater Accra and other parts of the country to combat the rampant armed robbery in 2002 happened during the tenure of Dr. Adokofo. He also led the implementation of measures to combat cocoa smuggling and initiated some afforestation programs with both government agencies and the private sector. A large forest plantation was successfully established at the Michel Camp and other garrisons across the country through the afforestation program. Dr. Adukufo ordered the introduction of, of water closet toilets in some of our prisons to replace the toilet buckets and persuaded the Prison Service Council to increase financial allocation made for meals for prisoners. Sorry, for, yes, for prisoners. He also introduced educational facilities in some of the prisons for prisoners to prepare themselves for certificate examinations, including training in ICT. Recent achievements. Dr. Adokofo was the board chairman for Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, from 2017 to 2020. He was adjudged the outstanding board chairman of year 2019 at the 10th Entrepreneur and Corporate Executive Awards for Ghana and was also honored in 2020 by the National Pensioners Association of Ghana for his outstanding leadership and contribution towards the National Pensioners Association. Family. Dr. Kufo is married to Rosemary and they are blessed with three adorable children, Kwame, Kwajo, and Nanama. Besides educating his children, he also educated other relations in his extended family. Your Excellency, the Vice President, this is the profile of the man we are honoring today. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for reading uh, such a comprehensive profile. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, may I now seek your permission to invite our Chancellor, Dr. Adokufo, to rise and invite the Chairman of the Governing Council and the Vice Chancellor to assist in enrobing the Chancellor.
Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Your Excellency the Vice uh, President of the Republic of Ghana, may I, with your permission, invite the Honorable Member of Parliament for Bosumchi, the Minister of Education, to introduce you, Your Excellency, for the administration of Hof. asked to make it very short, but how can I not do the protocol, the Ghanaian protocol? His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, His Excellency, former President John Ejikun Kufo, the representative of His Royal Majesty, Autun for um, Nana Safohine, Nana Pejahine, former council chair, um, chancellor, of this great institution, the Vice Chancellor, the Pro Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, our colleague ministers, members of the Diplomatic Corps, our friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. If this was American, just ladies and gentlemen, then you go. But in Ghana, you get into trouble if you don't do the right thing. Today, we are all honored uh, to be here and to see the swearing in of a great son of the land as the, uh, the Chancellor the inauguration of the great son of the land, the chancellor of this great institution. My job here is very simple. It's not time for me to talk. It's time for me to introduce uh, our special guest of honor, the vice president of the Republic of Ghana. Countries around the world are going through a turmoil. Our economies are in a tailspin. No country has been exempted from these great challenges that the world is facing. Countries that you never thought would have challenges are having challenges. Such a great turmoil that the world is going through. Ghana has not been exempted from this. And we are fortunate to have a president with an international reputation and experience. President who is shepherding us through this turbulent time after COVID-19. But we're also privileged to have a vice president who knows what time it is. There's not a better time to have the economist as a vice president when the world is facing an economic crisis. There's not a better time to have the captain of a ship who has experience when the ship is in distress. So, Ghana is in fact fortunate to have a president who knows how it is to steer the affairs of a country in turmoil, in economic challenges, social challenges, but to have a vice president who can support this president to deliver something that we are grateful to God for. So this morning we have the president, the vice president of the republic, the second gentleman of the land, a great individual with great accomplishment, well respected around the globe, somebody who knows the academia, knows politics, and knows bureaucracy, who is able to navigate himself through all these spheres of politics, bureaucracy, and all that it entails. And I can call him a great individual, a humble servant of the land, Dr. Mohamed Dubaoumia, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Minister for Education. My task at the moment is very simple. We'll administer the oath of office. So, you will please repeat. 
repeat after me and insert your name yes. as appropriate. So we'll first have the oath of office. I, I Kwame Adekufo, do in the name of the Almighty God swear. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear that I will at all times well and truly serve Kumasi Technical University. That at all, at all times serve truly the Kumasi Technical University and the Republic of Ghana in the office of the Chancellor. He's over speeding. <laughs> <laughs> He will serve in the office of the Chancellor of Kumasi Technical University. Kumasi Technical University. That I will uphold, preserve, and protect and defend. That I will uphold, preserve, protect, and defend. The university as by law established. The university as by law established. So help me God. So help me God. Brother. So we will proceed to the oath of secrecy. I, I, Kwame Adekufo, holding the office of Chancellor of the Kumasi Technical University, holding the office of Kumasi Technical University, Chancellor, Chancellor of the Kumasi Technical University, do in the name of the Almighty God swear, do in the name of the Almighty God swear, that I will not directly or indirectly that I will not directly or indirectly communicate or reveal to any person communicate or reveal to any person any matter which shall be brought under my consideration any matter which shall be brought under my consideration or shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my official duties or shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my official duties except as may be required for the discharge of my official duties. Except as may be required for the discharge of my official duties. Or as may be specially permitted by law. Or as may be specially permitted by law. So help me God. So help me God. May I seek your permission to ask our Honorable Chancellor to sign the oath. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, respectfully, may I invite you to give a speech. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Second President of the Fourth Republic, His Excellency John Ajekum Kufo, his Royal Majesty Otumfose Tutu II, represented by Safrohene, Epe Jahene, Ministers of State, Deputy Ministers of State, our Honorable Majority Leader and MP for Swami, Honorable Ose Chairman Sabunsu, the Chairman of the University Council, 
Professor Dr. Ben Bafuboni, the members of council, the vice chancellor, Professor Oseusu Achao, pro vice chancellor, registrar, members of convocation, esteemed clergy, our former speaker, Professor Mike Okwee, the members of the diplomatic corps, Nananum, fellow Ghanaians, friends of Kumasi Technical University, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today to witness the investiture ceremony of an outstanding statesman who has become the first chancellor of one of Ghana's finest technical universities, the Kumasi Technical University. It is a well-deserved honor, as all of you have done for Mother Ghana in the capacity, as, as all that you have done for Mother Ghana in the capacity as former board chairman of SNIT, president of the Ghana Medical Association, member of parliament for Minshia constituency, minister of defense and acting minister of interior, establishes that it is entirely appropriate that you have been appointed as the chancellor of the university. Nonetheless, I believe the university could not have picked a worthier leader than you. Your worth of experience as board chairman of Swami Magazine Industrial Development Organization indicates your in-depth knowledge an already established interest in technical and vocational education. Your Excellency John Ajekum Kufu, representatives of Your Royal Majesty Otumfo Se Tutu, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is apt that the first chancellor is a son of the land of the Ashanti Kingdom, who has been put in good stead to help propel the university onto greater heights to achieve the world-class university status. I commend the university authorities for the excellent choice of, the distinct, of a distinguished person, one who is also happily a firm believer in academic freedom, and I am hopeful that this university will definitely fill the added benefit of your rich experiences. For me today also, it's a little emotional because I personally know Dr. Kwame Adukupo. We all know him as a brilliant mind, high academic achiever, high professional achiever, a statesman, a family man, a God-fearing man. But for me, there is one thing that crowns all of these defining characteristics of this eminent personality. Dr. Kwame Adokufo is a man of integrity. Man of integrity. And therefore, he's a mentor to all of us in public service. He's the sort of person who, even when you are sitting in bed and he calls, you have to stand up, even though it's not close to you, uh, because of the stature of the man. And so I would also add to say that for Kumasi Technical University to choose him as the chancellor, I must say he has accepted. You have virtually won a lottery. You have won a lottery. I urge you, Dr. Chancellor, and all the heads of our tertiary institutions to continue to make adequate preparations towards the extensive call for prioritizing technical education in Ghana and beyond. The free senior high school and free TVET policies have become permanent features of our educational architecture, and their foundations shall be embedded in other reforms in the TVET education. Your Excellency, 
Chairman and members of the University Council, the Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellors and members of Convocation, ladies and gentlemen, I assure you of government's steadfast commitment and continuous support to the Kumasi Technical University and indeed to all other TVET institutions in the country. Building on the foundations established by President John Ajekum Kufu, the government of Nana Adodankwa Kufuado has demonstrated a renewed commitment to technical and vocational education, both at the secondary and tertiary levels. The vision of government since 2017 has been to align all TVET institutions in the country to provide appropriate governance and management structure for a unified national TVET system. The realignment of the TVET landscape is to provide coordination of the curriculum, training of trainers, linkage with industry, entry requirements, training facilities, mode of delivery assessment, certification system, and employability of graduates by synchronizing all existing laws relating to skills training in the country. In pursuit of this noble objective, I, on behalf of the President, launched the Ghana TVET service last year at a colorful event at the Accra Technical Training Center. I'm proud to see the many noticeable successes chalked by the management of the Ghana TVET service. Royal Majesty, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to announce that in the last six years, some significant interventions have been made in the TVET sector. These include upgrading and modernization, all the SYL 34 National Vocational and Technical Institutes. We've upgraded and modernized the head offices together with 10 regional offices. We've upgraded and modernized five apprenticeship offices across the country, and upgraded and modernized the Opportunity Industrialization Center in Accra, comprising the construction and equipping of laboratories, workshops, additional classrooms, hostels, administrative, and we've established two new foundries and machine centers, one at CSR in Accra and the other at KNUST in Kumasi. In addition, new workshops, computer, electrical, electronic, building construction, and mechanical, and we've done rehabilitation of buildings in two technical institutes, uh, Abetifi and Don Bosco, four senior high technical schools, uh, and five new district TVET centers of excellence are ongoing at Enginam, Pachi number two, uh, and, and which is near completion, while that of Asen Jakai in the central region, Akomadan, and Mansuabori in Ashanti will soon start. Also, we have completed and inaugurated the rehabilitation and upgrading of 10 technical universities and 13 technical institutes, which include construction of new workshops, laboratories, and supply and installation of equipment fit for disciplines in, electric, in electrical, electronics engineering, welding technology, automotive maintenance, civil engineering, and mechanical engineering. In July this year, at Abraham Kesi in Ashanti region, I cut the sword for the construction of the first phase of 32 state-of-the-art TVET centers to be built across the 16 regions of the country. The project is expected to comprise the establishment of one TVET center of excellence, 16 category A centers, and 15 category B centers. The first phase is made up of nine centers which will be located at Abrankesi in Ashanti region, Achimewisa in the eastern region, Bwako in the western north region, 
Kenya Sea in Ahafo region, Patuda in the Bono East region, Dambai in the Oti region, Salaga in the Savannah region, Guabulga in the Northeast region, and Toliburi in the Upper West region. All these institutions will be provided a variety of infrastructure which ranges from administration blocks, accommodation facilities, common areas, playing grounds, furniture fittings, and external work tools and equipment for workshops and ICT. This is an indication, ladies and gentlemen, that government is committed to investing in technical and vocational education and training infrastructure to meet the needs of industry and changing global standards. Your Excellency, Your Royal Majesty, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with all these interventions, it is my expectation and hope that Kumasi Technical University will constitute, will continue to churn out gra graduates who are molded to take on the opportunities and possibilities for higher achievement through innovation and creativity in today's technology-led, knowledge-driven global economy and who will thereby help generate prosperity for the mass of our people in our time. I believe that your continuous effort as an institution led by results-driven Dr. Kwame Adokufo in building the workforce for the future generation whose work will give full meaning to the words of our country's motto, freedom and justice. The generation that will build a new Ghanaian civilization shall see the birth of possibilities. Once again, Chancellor, warm congratulations, and I wish you the very best of luck and God's guidance in the discharge of your large responsibilities. Enjoy every bit of this moment. You deserve it, and you have earned it a hundredfold. May God bless you, Dr. Kwame Adokufo, and us all. And may God bless our homeland Ghana and make it great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Um, that, that is an unofficial appellation. We're going to have a lot of official appellations. Thank you. Uh, please remain standing. May I now invite the representative of two for the Asantehene to join for the photo shoot. Thank you, Your Majesty. You may have your seat. Please, Your Excellency, remain standing. Chancellor, remain standing. May I invite the Council Chairman, the Vice Chancellor, the Pro Vice Chancellor, and the Registrar to join. May I invite the Honorable Minister of Education to join. Thank you very much. Um, as the Vice President leaves, may I tell you that the seat of the Chancellor was developed by our furniture department. So this university is capable of developing complex seats. Isn't it wonderful that because of one special person, all of us are gathered here? It tells you the nature of that person. Shall we continue, Honorable Chancellor? May I now invite Nana 
apaja hene o hene ba o so free the fourth and chief kufo to give a congratulatory message the honorable minister of education the former president of the republic council chair vice chancellor family friends members of the university community it's with great pleasure that we stand here this morning to express our sincerest gratitude to the university community for selecting our uncle, our family member, our father, our husband as the first chancellor of this great technical university. There's not much that we can say. The, most of the speakers beforehand did attest to his attributes, a man of integrity, a can-do spirit, a man who rewards meritocracy, so that should go for members of the university community, especially the senior management who would have to deal with him daily. Please be warned, buyer beware. If, if, if you are one of those whose forte is to apportion excuses for your failure to execute your task, then you might be seeking a transfer or a position in another technical university. You are going to work and earn your keep. That is the man you have today invested as your chancellor. But he's a great supporter of hard work, a man whose desire is always to lift one up from where he was. I remember the first time I entered an architectural studio, it was not through my father, but through him. The late architect Enifu, I see the Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast here, so some junior would know him very well. I'd just finished A level 96, there was a strike, and my uncle came over to our house and asked, what is it that you desire to, to study in the university? And I said, architecture. He said, very well. One evening, he comes over and he says, Monday, 8 a.m., report to a bungalow behind Bomso Clinic. I've spoken to the partner there who's a good friend of mine and advised him, or asked him rather to engage you so that you learn the rudiments of the architectural trade before you actually enter university. Likewise, when I finished university, the great Samjona, uh, sorry, the great uh, Enifuigen had passed on. I traveled for a couple of months, come back, and that time he was the Minister of Defense. That was just after the incident in Dagbon. So he used to travel around with this pickup of military police in his tail. So I was living not too far from here, Aquitia Line. One fine afternoon, I get a call. He's at a family house at Pejefium. He says, what are you doing? So I'm just lazing about. He says, get up. I'll be there in the next 10 minutes. Get dressed. I'm taking you to the place you start your apprenticeship as an architect. I had no knowledge of this office. There also, unfortunately, that great man, my mentor, D.D. Jabin, has passed on. But that's why I've stayed till today and made partner at Amalgamated Group. So this is the man you have just appointed as chancellor. There are many such people here who he's opened doors for, who he's helped, who is opened doors for them to enrich themselves, not only monetarily, but also to become better people. There are so many members of our family who have relied on him in most times to create better opportunities for them. I see tons of people from our holy village that are born here to back him. When the uh, registrar said the military, they wouldn't stop playing because during his tenure there, he opened doors to a lot more people. I've seen many people from politics since he's no more in active politics, so to speak, backing him. You have the clergy here who would speak endlessly about his generosity towards them. And I see family members from across the country here to support him. I see people from his former workplace, Snit. I see the chairman, current chairman, the director general, and, the, and his deputy here. The speaker, former speaker of parliament is here. So this is the man you've given this honor to. So on behalf of my cousin, the whole family, 
his elder brother, who also, for those who don't know, is also a chancellor, so we are very privileged and blessed. He is the chancellor of uh, Power Grant University in Takwa. So, with great honor and not being boastful, we are sure there's no other family that has two chancellors in their family like we do. <laughs> so, we thank the university community and all of you for this great pleasure and honor, and thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, Nana Pejahini. Um, we say traditionally, Piao. I think I'm right. If I'm wrong, Nana no Mumfanchemi. Um, what a wonderful family. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You say more. Your Excellency, the former President of the Republic of Ghana, Honorable Minister of Education, may I invite the wonderful Ejako Unimo and his group to give us an appellation. I'm 
I was going to run from Bobo's boy to senior point personal when this uh, disease came. And I hope uh, time will come for me to complete the second edition of the memoir. It therefore came as a very pleasant surprise when I received a letter from the University Council inviting me to accept the position of Chancellor. Your Excellency, Madam, ladies and gentlemen, I realize the position of Chancellor is almost akin to Mr. Penny. He must be a man of few words. I don't want to stand here for a long period. I'll go and sit down soon. <laughs> Presiding over formal congregations and ceremonies of the university. I will not interfere in the internal affairs of the university. I promise that. As for being too hard, I'm a church elder. So, members of the faculty, I had a Pajani say, I'll get somebody to transfer. No, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Even so, assuming this role, I have blessed to provide all the necessary support and assistance to the council, faculty, administration of the Kumasi Technical University to rise to be one of the topmost institutions for information and communication development and training in Ghana and the wider world. Ladies and gentlemen, I have confidence in the ability, creativity, and ingenuity of the Ghanaian youth. It is my firm belief that with the right type of education and training, our young people can create and achieve whatever their counterparts elsewhere in the world have attained. And there, of course, for about 10 years, I was teaching at uh, Kwanam Kruman University, the medical school. At that time, it was an infant institution. I trained at Cambridge, University College Hospital in London, did my postgraduate at the Middlesex Teaching Hospital, so I've been to the best school street, Britain. I can tell you that the average medical student I trained, I don't know what is happening now, the average medical was of the same caliber or slightly higher than some of my contemporaries at medical school. They have very high level students and not so but the average student I taught at the medical school for 10 years was of the same caliber or sometimes higher than the people I trained. So I have confidence in the Canadian youth, giving the right training and they can do wonders for this country. I therefore regard this call to be Chancellor as an opportunity to help develop the young university students into world class talent in order to serve Ghana and raise the image of Africa on the world stage. This is my mission to help raise this institution and help the young students to achieve greatness. Excellence and honor, ladies and gentlemen, I invite any among us who doubt the ability of the Ghanaian youth to simply observe the numerous partners and successes they continually achieve in various fields of endeavor, be it in academia, science and robotics, sports or music. So let's help our young people and they raise this country to a higher level. From its inception as Kumasi Technical Institute to its current status as Kumasi Technical University, this institution has always been associated with technical capacity building and the delivery of innovative solutions. I'm therefore convinced that this university has the pedigree to achieve the stated objectives and mission. I have confidence in this institution and I hope in a few years we shall see better performance. Speaking about pedigree, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to call out and commend the chairman of the University Council, Professor Ben Bafogoni. He and I have been friends from teenage days. Ashton boys, he went to Germany, I went to Britain. His wife is my wife's best friend. They are sitting together over there. I see him regularly. 
Professor Osia Chow, the Vice Chancellor, Nana, Pokwa Jiman, and all members of the University Council, the faculty, and all other staff of the University for your hard work, splendid achievements over the last five years. So far as Njiman Pokwa Jiman is concerned, even before, before I was commissioned as Chancellor, it's offered great services to me, and I would like to take this opportunity to show my appreciation to him. His father was also my best friend. On two occasions, 2020-2021, the Kumasi Technical University was adjudged number one technical university in Ghana. The university also ranked among the best 10 universities in this country. I therefore offer my congratulations for this wonderful performance. I genuinely feel excited having the opportunity to join this hardworking team to further grow and enhance the fortunes of these great institutions. Your Excellency Nananum, ladies and gentlemen, I am aware of the immense contribution the Ghanaian Academia has over the years offered to the local businesses, agriculture, and industry. Through various research projects, consultancy assignments, and advisory roles. Unfortunately, this is done in a personal capacity and as such goes unnoticed and unreported. You go around and people tell you, university technical college, it's false. You've done a lot, but as the Lord said, you don't light a candle to put it under a bushel. If you do something positive, the country must know about it, the citizens must know about it, and we are going to do more of that in the future. Such collaborations are desirable as they enhance our economy and reduce our excessive dependence on imported items. The real job of the technical university is to help us to manufacture and create things locally. Look at the number of items Ghana imports. Completely unnecessary. We should regard it as our mission to ensure that a lot more things are produced locally. There are many successes and innovations that have occurred because of collaboration in the past between academia and industry. These good stories should be documented and the respective faculty and institutions given the recognition they deserve. That is what is lacking. You do things quietly and nobody hears about it. It's not in your interest. In this regard, ladies and gentlemen, it is my hope that in the near future, local businesses and community of artisans in Kumasi and across the country shall approach the Kumasi Technical University for avant-garde solutions to their problems and regard the university as a true business partner. That's what we should be, a business partner to industry, a business partner to agriculture. This should be especially the case in the development of appropriate tools and equipment for national development with emphasis on agricultural mechanization. Look, you greet a farmer and the palm is so hard, nobody needs to tell you he's an, a, a farmer. That should be a thing of the past. I don't know what you call it, but this, this machine they put on the shoulder and it turns around, the propellers turn around and it clears the grass. I think we should make it our aim to manufacture similar equipment in Ghana so that our farmers will put cutlass aside and just put an equipment on the shoulder and clear their farms. That should be our aim. I also call for closer collaboration between academia and Swami. 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 And here I'm appealing to members of the academia when discussing problems, to do so in the local languages. If you go there with the Bruni Brofo, they will run away from you because they won't understand what you are talking about. 
So if you want to help them solve their problems, use local language. Nana sa ai to be what is our no miaha machine the book on they will approach you more often and you'll be more helpful to them. Your Excellency Nananum, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to commend the government for the establishment of the numerous TVET institutions across the country and for successfully implementing its many job creation programs, such as Planting for Food and Jobs, 1D1F, and the Youth Employment Agency. Unfortunately, the Vice President is not here, but I'm sure you pass on the information to him that I commend the government for establishing these institutions. Establishing these programs is more than a step in the right direction. Going forward, I urge government to strengthen the links between tertiary institutions, industry, and agriculture. In many countries, when industry wants solution to their problems, they go to the universities. It should be the same in Ghana. For example, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, the Ministry of Education must be supported to set up framework for formal collaboration between tertiary institutions and industry. This would ensure that the graduating student comes out of the university with considerable exposure to the workplace. This is what is lacking. A student studying engineering in this institution should also know what is happening at magazine. I don't see why holidays they shouldn't go to magazine and work with the artisans. It will help them to develop better in research and also in their desire to help enhance the development of their country. So there should be closure a closer collaboration between academia and industry. Staying with collaboration, the university must continue to reach out to share knowledge of mutual value with our local senior institution. And here I'm talking about Kwame Nkrumah University and also other universities in the country. There should be closer collaboration between the tertiary institutions for the sake of this country's development. Your Excellency, Nanam, ladies and gentlemen, before I take my seat, I said I was going to be brief. I hope I haven't taken too much of your time. I'm going to be brief. <laughs> Permit me to commend the student body of the Kumasi Technical University for their commitment to their studies, social responsibility, and discipline. Discipline is very important. As minister, I traveled around the world, and I was very close to the Chinese. The main reason why they are ahead of many other countries is discipline. It's a word we don't want to hear in this country. In our country, discipline is associated with wickedness. Now, quality modeling, because it's discipline. Without discipline, society does not develop. I appeal to the students as our future leaders, as future leaders of our great country, I entreat them to continue to demonstrate such positive behavior and not indulge in the kind of aggression and violence recently reported on some other campuses. Ghana and Africa are facing many challenges. A student who gets the opportunity of going to university has a, is in a privileged position. You should be thinking about better, better times, things to do with his time than demonstrating and fighting each other. That's not in anybody's interest. And I hope the students in this university will be disciplined, behave well, and take their students' studies seriously. Your Excellency Nanami, ladies and gentlemen, with these few words, I accept with gratitude and humility the honor of becoming the first chancellor of Kumasi Technical University. I thank you all for your attention. Shall we rise to congratulate our Chancellor? Thank you very much, Honorable Chancellor. May I now invite the University Choir to give us the University Anthem before I acknowledge the presence 
of the dignitaries here. Shall we remain standing? Be seated. That is Nimdie Shireng Emma Amaina Ubi. If you look at the last page of the brochure you're holding, the anthem is there. I pray that all you read when you get to your homes to understand our anthem better. Your Excellency, the former President, President Kufo, Honorable Minister of Education, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, May I, with your permission, acknowledge the presence of some dignitaries around. I plead that if I'm not able to mention your name, you forgive me. We have here, or we had here, the Vice President of the Nation. We have our former President, our beloved President John Ajikum for here. We have our Honorable Minister of Education, Ejumeura, they call him, Dr. Oseya Educhum. We have Nana Asafohini here, representing His Royal Majesty, the Asantehene, Utufo Oseitutu II. We have our handsome Nana Apejahini here, a former council member, and we love him so much. For Heneba, who is the free, the fourth. And he doubles as a special relation to the Chancellor. We have here Most Reverend Dr. Cyril Ben Smith. Cyril. Ben Smith, the Archbishop of Bampong. We have our Venerable, Most Reverend Professor Daniel Yinkasafu, who also doubles as our council member. Professor Archbishop of Ghana. 
Isan say most reverend sir. O abudi ahudu pi bi a hasan kabiye jana ho. He is the primate of the Church of the Province of West Africa. Archbishop of Internal Province of Ghana and Bishop of Mampong for the Anglican Church. Nananum Sabodi we a chair professor Bohonai. We have our honorable regional minister here. What we had? We had the KMA mayor here. We have a former Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay. Very wonderful. We have huh, great men. Sir Sam Jonah here. <laughs> we have Honorable Abna Osei Asari. Etiwa is Deputy Minister of Finance here. We have our own, I call him the champion of the legislature, Honorable Osei Chieben Sabuns, here. We have Honorable Ochem Abuaji here, former MP for Bantama. Honorable Cecilia Dapa, Minister for Water Resources and Sanitation. We have uh, Honorable SK Buafu, former MP and former Ashanti Regional Minister here. Great men are here. We have Honorable Akoto, uh, Honorable Minister for Agri here. Really, we have great men here. We have Mrs. Elizabeth Ohene, the board chair of SNIT. Uh, I have read a lot of articles written by this wonderful woman and the brilliance and the language she uses is up there. Wonderful. We have Dr. John Ofori Tenkrai, Director General of SNIT here. Oh, I must say, those of us in the public service and contributing to SNIT are so grateful to this wonderful gentleman. The reform he has brought to SNIT has made it such that people retire and just within 30 days they get their money. Congratulations. We have SNIT senior management here present. You are welcome, senior management of SNIT. We have Dr. Osei and Bofor here. Um, there is a special man I'm going to mention. He is a very good friend of this university. We work together with him and do some research for him. And he is ready to assist us do greater exploits. Dr. Perkwoti Adonkoma. We have a good number of ministers of state here, please. If I don't mention your name, you are acknowledged. And we also have a good number of other members of parliament here. If I don't mention your name, please, you are acknowledged. I'm going to mention a special person to this university under whose administration this structure was built. The former principal, principal of this university, Dr. Lord Emmanuel Asamoa. We have Mr. Eric Probe here, also the former principal of this university. May I this time invite the representative of His Royal Majesty Utufu Osei II Asantehine to give us a remark.
Your Excellency, the ex-president of Republic of Ghana, I now address the Chancellor of the Kumasi Technical University, the Pro Vice Chancellor. All protocol observed. But I, I wouldn't want to find myself in a wrong position. I stand here on behalf of Otunfo Osetutu II, the Asantehini, as a special guest of honor to this occasion, and to do one major thing. And I will speak with affiliation and affection that Otunfo would have had and shown to his own son, Dr. Kwame Adokufo, being the first chancellor of this university, and to say, Kwame, congratulations for this great honor you've made or you've done, not only to yourself and to the family, but to Asantiman. Congratulations. I know that you are a great achiever. And listening to your inaugural speech, I already have seen and heard the vision you would have for this great institution. And we're looking forward to the transformation and the dreams you have had in terms of what you have stated in your inaugural statement. We want to see Kumasi Technical University become the greatest. And therefore, under your leadership as chancellor, of this university, we Asante, we people of Kumasi, but also the people of Ghana, we made proud. Congratulations and thank you very much. Your Excellency, the former President of the Republic of Ghana, Honorable Minister of Education, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the elders say, after the elders of the elders speak, everything ends. Or after the elder finishes bathing, water it's finished, if I have not, not said it wrongly. His Royal Majesty has spoken. It is Suasan. May I now invite Engineer Nanapoku Ajimai to, on behalf of the Governing Council, give the vote of thanks. I'm sure this is the best technical investor in Ghana. And we know, we know investing protocol. So, Sir Sam Jonah, you are the Chancellor of uh, University of Cape Coast. I would want you to come up and sit before I continue my speech. Pardon us for the mistake. But because, regrettably, this morning you are not robed in your gown as Chancellor of University of Cape Coast. So please sit here before we continue. 
Your Excellency John Ajekum Kufo, President, former President of the Republic of Ghana, Honorable Aduchum, Minister for Education, under whose ambit we are having this ceremony this morning. The latest Chancellor in town, the Gold Coast boy who is metamorphosing into a Chancellor and a retired senior citizen, Honorable Dr. Kwame Adekofo, Sir Samjuna, my own uncle and Chancellor of the third oldest university in Ghana, the University of Cape Coast. Chairman and council members of this great institution, and it will be remiss of me if I do not recognize the presence of a few of the executive here. Honorable Osu Efria Koto, Minister for Greek, my own uncle, Bafo Koto's son, a great illustrious son of this land, and my own sister, Honorable Cecilia Abnadapa, who is my father's favorite niece. Even though he's dead, you continue to be his favorite niece and minister for sanitation. Nananom Bafo Dumine, Bafo Anantahine, Nanaman Pontehe, Nanasemine. I also saw the majority leader here, Honorable Osei Chairman Sabonsu. And I think I also saw a member of the Council of State, Honorable Georgina Kusi. I saw her enter. I don't know if she's still around because she's not been recognized. I mean, the Council of State plays a major role in our country, so it is right and proper that we recognize her. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure this morning. And indeed, I deem it a great privilege to, on behalf of the governing council of this great institution, render a profound vote of thanks for this auspicious and historic ceremony this morning. It is historic because it is the first of its kind in our country. This is the first technical university in Ghana to have ably chosen, appointed, and invested a chancellor. So we've made history. We've made, we've made history today. And it is no doubt, I dare say, that our accolade of being the best technical university is not just by words, but it's by actions and deeds. And we we have also chosen an action-oriented man. Overkwame, I'm sure you said I've rendered so many services to you, but I'm doing so not because I know you or you're, you were my father's best friend, but because I know you're a man of integrity. I know you're a man who can deliver, and everywhere you have worked, posterity has judged you right. You were a lecturer at KNUST, you served at Confanoti Teaching Hospital. You served at the Ghana Medical Association. You served the good people of Mencia, my own constituency. As member of parliament, you served as minister for defense and interior. And in all your chosen fields, you excelled. You are here not because you are the son of Nana Mapa. I heard Nana Pejahin say that they are the only family who can boast of two chancellors. It is not so, but because of your deeds, because of your qualities, because of your integrity. And I dare say that this university is blessed. We did not make any mistake. And I am particularly proud when I had the privilege of nominating you to the search committee as chancellor of this university. <laughs> Prof. Bafuboni is his best friend, but this is not any kukufu ball he won it on merit. He said that they are best friends, they have been best friends as teenagers, but he won it on merit. And I've also known him since I was five, but he won it on merit. We went through a lot of scrutiny. There were a lot of equally qualified people who could have been made chancellor, but he rose tall, and today we are witnessing this historic function. Let me also congratulate and thank Mrs. Rosemary Adokufo, 
who has been the life partner of Dr. Kwame Adokofo, our new Chancellor. Auntie Rose, we are very grateful for your service and support to Dr. Kwame Adokofo and the children, Kojo, uh, Kwame Nanama, for the support you have given your father. And to all and sundry, especially the University Council. They are the most powerful, I mean, the University Council, until I became a member, I didn't know it was the most powerful block in the university because once they reject anything the search committee brings you cannot have a chancellor so we are, we are having a chancellor because of the university council and i thank you i thank the student body thank the media i thank all and sundry and of course we thank the representative of his majesty i left it for last so to be remiss of me if i do not recognize otunfo he would have very much wanted to be here but i'm sure you all know he's mourning and he cannot be here with us today May God bless Dr. Kwame Adokofor, protect him and guide him to be able to administer the affairs of this university as chancellor. May God bless this great institution, Kumasi Technical University. May God bless Asantiman and may, be, may God bless a great country, Ghana, and make us strong. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, engineer. Nanapuku Ajimai. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we inch closer to the end of the program, may I acknowledge the presence of Professor Edu Jemfi, the former boss of the National Health Insurance Authority. <laughs> he is here with his better half, who was also a former ambassador to Sierra Leone. Madam, you're welcome. We will soon have a benediction from Most Reverend Dr. Cyril Kobna Ben Smith. Praise ye, all creatures, yeah, below. Praise him above. Deny our hearts in prayer. O Lord our God, who uphold us and govern all things in heaven and earth, receive our humble prayers with our thanksgiving for servant honorable Kwame Adukufo, set over this institution by thy grace and providence to be Chancellor. So together with him, bless the University Council management, students, and the whole university fraternity. Lord, endue them with your Holy Spirit, enrich them with your heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to your grace and your favor. And Lord, and so we continue to bring our country, Ghana, before you, praying for your divine intervention in all that we do, especially the economic situation praying that things will prosper for us. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us even now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you, military band. May I invite the choir to lead the procession out? We acknowledge the presence of Nana Domi Abrahini. Nana, you're dancing. 